NVIDIA is going to be releasing the RTX 5060 in <gasps> when? I have a date for you. Battle Mage, that's right, Intel. Don't forget about Intel. You remember they make graphics cards? You remember that, Tanner? Yeah. Well, I have some news on the new Battle Mage card. My goodness gracious, the team up of a century, Seasonic and Noctua. They have a new collaboration. We're gonna talk about that. Also, big, big, big news. Intel has what? Micro code issues again? We're gonna talk about that and more. Check it out. Let's get into the news. Come with me, will you? You know, just last week, we wondered if Battle Mage was still alive. Yeah, that's Intel's graphics cards. We hadn't heard much about them, and with recent issues with their CPUs, it seemed like Battle Mage was all but dead. That is, until this week, because it looks like Intel just leaked their own graphics card. Plus, ASRock will be making Battle Mage graphics cards now. This is all reportedly, but we need to check out these articles on videocards.net, because they've got all the info that we need. Let's take a look. Wow, OC edition. Now, what does that mean, Tanner? We just did a video on that. That's an NVIDIA thing. That's an NVIDIA thing, and this is an overclock. Is that right? Oh, ray tracing on this car too. Let's take a look at more details here. It turns out the company made no effort to hide the upcoming launch and that it's not even referring to the already leaked ASRock graphics cards. But if you do some searching, you poke around Intel's site, you're gonna find several references to the Arc B series. Now the B stands for Battle Mage. Makes sense, right, Tanner? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perhaps more interesting though, is the leak from Hayes, who found the Arc B series listed on a support page. Intel's starting to show signs of this thing being a thing, whether it's on support or various sides of the site, and uh, you're getting little kind of drip feeds that these are going to end up coming out. And no one cares about the support page. They want to know when it's going to come out. Q4 2024? Well, the Q4 is ticking down. 12 gig card, 12 gigs of VRAM. So my big question is, what does this compete against on the NVIDIA and AMD side. So 12 gigs on the VRAM right out of the gate, you're, you're trying to play in 4070 land. Now, can it play in 4070 land? Are you yeah. saying you don't have faith? <laughs> Tanner is over here casting a shadow of doubt on our friends at Intel. In fact, we already have a picture of the very first model listed on Amazon. This is the ASRock Arc B580 Steel Legend. The card is now confirmed to feature the XE2 HPG architecture and is overclocked to 2.8 gigahertz. According to the product details, the card offers 12 gigs of GDDR6 memory with a memory clock speed of 19 gigabits. This is a 4070 competitor on the heels of the 50 series coming out, and the 4070 is actually going away. Interesting timing. Don't you think, Tanner? Yeah. Kind of interesting timing. What do you think about the cards? Do you like how they look? No. <laughs> Tanner said it, I didn't say anything. Let us know, what do you think? What do you think this card is gonna sell for? Closest person in the comments to get it right, gets it right. Are you guys tired of hearing about the 50 series yet? We talk about it every single week. The rumors and release dates for these graphics cards have changed multiple times this year. At first, the talk around town was that the 5080 was releasing in the fall, and then it was both the 5080 and the 5090. At this point, the NVIDIA leak community has entirely lost the plot, but we have some new leaks and rumors on the release date of these cards. So, of course, we have to talk about it. And this article on, oh, what, you guessed it, videocards.net outlines all the important information. Let's take a, let's take a gander, shall we? Here's the lineup, expected. Is this real? Who the frick knows? We're gonna talk about it anyway, because we like talking about rumors. 5090, Q1, 2025, 5090D, Q1 2025, 5080 Q1 2025. So Q1 2025 for everything 5090 through 5070. Rumors suggested that the RTX 5070 might appear in February, whereas the 5060 could slip to March. However, as far as we know, it is true that NVIDIA is not yet providing full details to board partners. It does not appear that NVIDIA has distributed the 5060 GPUs yet for desktops. But there are some new reports on specs. Benchlife confirmed the report from videocards.net that the 5070 Ti will feature the GB203 to 300 GPUs. It's almost 9,000 CUDA cores. A 300 watt TGP, not TDP it seems. Furthermore, they add that this model will launch with 16 gigs of GDDR7 memory. That's for the 5070 Ti. Now the 5070, on the other hand, 
which has already been rumored to feature the GB205 GPU, is now said to have 6400 CUDA cores and a 250 watt TDP. This model is said to feature 12 gigs. All these leaks, guys, keep this in mind, should be considered rumors until we get closer to the launch, which is going to be CES. So listen, NVIDIA always comes out with some interesting stuff to release in the product. I think it's going to be a 50 series will be a pretty interesting launch. Tanner added this next story, and I am not entirely sure why. You're a big Noctua fan, I guess. Fan? Brown fan. Well, two brands that aren't exactly known for like insane marketing activities, but are known for solid products, have teamed up to make the ultimate power supply. Let's check this out. Noctua and Seasonic, two great brands, by the way, have launched a ultra quiet power supply. What color do you think this power supply leans heavily on? Now, I will give you a hint. Noctua's involved. Brown! He nailed it. A 1600 watt power supply. Guess how much this is. Too much. Too much. Well, if you guessed 569 bucks, you were right. Now this is a 1600 watt power supply and it has knock two on it. So you know it's gonna be a little bit more premium. Seasonic makes a great power supply. They always get great ratings. We love Seasonic. This new power supply features the NF A12 by 25 fan, which is known for its low noise operation. This would have fit great into a build that we finished. We wanted to build like the ultimate brown slash gold system and we put this together. This power supply would have been great for that build. According to Noctua, the new power supply is designed to work fully passively below 50% load and under 25 degrees Celsius temperatures. That means that if your system only needs 800 watts of power under load, chances are you won't even use the built-in fan at all. Otherwise the fan will kick in and even when running at 100% load, it's only gonna generate 24 dBA of noise. Quiet, quiet power supply built by a solid power supply brand. This is cool. I like this. I, I think it's, the price is crazy, but dude, what do you expect? If you're buying their stuff, I mean yeah, you're used, if you've, <laughs> you're right. If you're already putting together an Octua build, you're used to it being a little bit more expensive. 2024 has been a rough year for Intel, and it looks like microcode is the main reason. The 13th and 14th gen processors obviously had their infamous set of issues, but when Intel launched the Core Ultra 200S processors, the performance was a little bit lackluster. Now these processors do what they need to, but the increase in performance is what everybody found a little bit disappointing. Well, it turns out that Intel may be fixing this with yet another microcode patch. The overclocker Scatterbencher shared some info recently pointing to this microcode update. Let's take a look. Overclocker claims big changes in Arrow Lake voltage frequency behavior with upcoming microcode. We are getting sick of hearing microcode. <laughs> Earlier this month, Intel's VP and GM stated that Intel will have something for the Core Ultra 200 series by the end of this month. Is a supposed fix aimed at addressing multi-factor issues at the operating system level and BIOS level. However, the main focus is to deliver the performance Intel promised in its launch slides. Intel has not yet fully confirmed what will change or how it will affect performance. It may not yield better results for everyone as some systems already performed as described in review. So it sounds like this is just an attempt to level the playing field. It sounds like some people are having just fine performance and it's comparing fine to the launch slides and then other people are going, where, where that performance did I pay for? This is, uh, this is tough guys. Uh, I would say right now, maybe highly consider uh, AMD. It's Widowy Black Friday today, and who's having a big sale? Steam, who's having an even bigger and better sale? MetaPCs. Go to metapcs.com right now because it is Black Friday. It is the sale of all sales. In fact, we're running it until Cyber Monday. We got good stuff marked down, ready to ship systems. That means we go to the next business day, we have marked down custom builds, and we bribed the FedEx and UPS guy to get you your shipment even cheaper and faster. We have bribed so many bureaucrats, police, and emergency personnel to make sure that you get your PC faster than those other brands. They don't love you like we do. They are robots. We are not. We are humans that love and show emotion. Go to metapcs.com because we want to give you a big Black Friday Cyber Monday hug 
Let us embrace you. Let us show you love. Let us move in for just a couple days, I swear. Metapcs.com. Gabe and Newell says that no one in the industry thought Steam would work as a distribution platform. I'm not talking about one or two people, I mean 99%. Let me detour for a second. No one thinks anything is gonna work until it works. That is that is like a base for business and life in and of itself. People are programmed to be like, that ain't gonna work. And then when it works, people go, I always knew this guy's living his best life. The pink polo, Steam Deck, and he's got like a tiki drink. Dude, this guy is rocking. I wanna hang out with Gaben. Steam launched in 2003. How old were you in 2003? Three. You were three years old. Well, while you were three years old, Gaben, was, uh, had a pencil sketch of an idea in his head about what would become Steam. It was clear with Team Fortress Classic and then Counter-Strike that fundamentally the thing we were really attracted to was the ability to ship content directly to customers. So you get into the, the game to make games and then you go, we, we could be really good at delivering these things. This is nothing short of incredible what Gaben, my friend, has done over at Steam. Nothing like this existed back in, what, 2004, 2003? I mean, my goodness gracious. And I can tell you this much, PC gaming would not be where it is today without Steam. Agree or agree? Agree. Also, Steam is one of these companies that has managed to evade any sort of massive issues publicly. Yeah. I know everyone has their own experiences, but overall, I think it's pretty safe to say that I would die for Steam. Gaben, we got you, bro. We got you. I always believe. Ladies, gentlemen, nerds, and nerdettes, I've saved the best for last on this show. I don't, I don't typically like to make big announcements at the end of shows, other than when Tanner gets married or divorced. We have my father here. Dad, come on out. Are you winning, son? Only if people subscribe and like on the channel. This is my dad, Trogdor. He adopted me from an orphanage when I was very young, and he drinks monster energy. It's better than that. You son of a Like and subscribe. Thanks, Dad.